astrophoto colors are they fake or not and is processing cheating these are two of the most common misconceptions surrounding deep sky astrophotography that i've heard today i'm going to dive deep and we're going to try and understand where the colors in these images come from and why post-processing isn't just necessary it's an integral part of the craft of astrophotography blending both science and art Let's tackle colours first. When we image deep sky objects, we're capturing light that has travelled for thousands, even millions of years. This light comes from different sources. Stars themselves emit a broad spectrum of light. Reflection nebula scatter starlight, often appearing quite bluish. An emission nebula glow because gas clouds are energised, typically by nearby hot stars. Emission nebulae are particularly colourful because different elements, when energised, emit light at very specific wavelengths, like fingerprints. Hydrogen gas, the most abundant and common element, glows strongly in a deep red, known as hydrogen alpha. Whereas oxygen glows in a blue-green, oxygen 3. Sulphur in another shade of red, sulphur 2, and so on. These emissions are real physical phenomena. How do cameras capture this light and this colour? Colour cameras, that is DSLR, mirrorless or one-shot colour astrocams, have tiny red, green and blue filters over each pixel in what is called a Bayer matrix to capture colour information in one shot. They do capture the real reds of hydrogen and the blue-greens of oxygen but their sensitivity might be limited, especially to specific wavelengths like hydrogen alpha, unless modified. Monochrome cameras, on the other hand, have to be used with filters, and many advanced images use these monochrome cameras. They're much more sensitive. They shoot through specific filters one at a time, red, green, blue for broadband color, or specialized narrowbound filters that only let through the light of hydrogen alpha, oxygen 3, or sulfur 2. This isolates the light from specific elements within the nebula or galaxy and creates incredible contrast, blocking out most light pollution. There are two main ways that we capture this color. The first is RGB. We combine the red, green and blue filtered images to create a natural colour image, approximating to what our eyes might see if they were sensitive enough and could stare for hours. Why I say this is because we have to take our images with long exposures of several minutes and many hours of stacking. Our eyes just see live and a very short exposure. Narrowband is the second way that we capture light. Since we're capturing wavelengths our eyes can't easily separate, like hydrogen alpha and sulfur 2, both being red, we often assign different colors for scientific reasons so that we can see the different details in our nebulae and galaxies. And also, this is a form of artistic interpretation. The famous Hubble palette assigns sulfur to red, hydrogen to green, and oxygen to blue. This is known as the show palette. This isn't a fake color. It's a representational color map designed to highlight the structure and distribution of specific elements and gases within a nebula or galaxy. The underlying data showing where each element is located is absolutely real, and it's not fake. However, on the other hand, you could say green doesn't exist in the reality of space in terms of gases and light given off by these deep sky objects. So green is fake. OK, now visualizing the science, palettes and processing as storytelling. So we know that narrowband palettes like the Hubble palette map specific elemental emissions to red, green and blue 
But why that specific color mapping? It's not arbitrary. It's often chosen to tell a scientific story visually. Take the standard Hubble palette. Sulfur is red, hydrogen is green, and oxygen is blue. Oxygen 3, mapped to blue, often traces the hottest, highest energy regions, typically closest to ionizing stars. Hydrogen alpha, green, shows the most abundant element outlining the bulk structure of the nebula. Sulfur 2, the red, often indicates cooler, lower ionization areas, sometimes tracing outflows or the edges where ionization fronts meet surrounding gas. This specific mapping visually separates these different physical zones. In other words, the color scheme reveals the different elements and gases in the deep sky object. But other color palettes exist, HSO, HOO, etc., that rearrange these assigned colors. Each palette emphasizes different interactions and structures, telling a slightly different visual narrative about the physics happening within the nebula or the galaxy. The choice isn't about making it pretty randomly. In other words, it's not creating fake colors just for the sake of it. It's often a deliberate choice to highlight specific scientific features. This idea also extends to processing. When we stretch a histogram or enhance contrast, we're making conscious choices about which details we want to emphasize and make stronger in our images. Are we trying to show the faintest outer structures, the intricate details near the core, the boundary between different gas regions? Our processing decisions guide the viewer's eye and help communicate the most interesting or relevant aspects of the object's structure and nature. Of course, there is also an artistic side to this, and it's all subjective. You can over-process, you can over-color something, but fake, I don't think it's the right word. Rather than faking colors or cheating with processing, Think of it as translating complex scientific data into a visual language that we can understand. We use color mapping and processing techniques to interpret the data we have and tell the story of these incredible deep sky objects in a way that is both informative and visually compelling. In other words, we're not just trying to make a pretty fake picture. So let's go a little bit more into this question of processing. You see a dim, noisy, raw file and then a stunning final image. It feels like absolutely magic. And this is why many people think when they see this, that using Photoshop, using astrophotography processing is a form of cheating. Let's break down exactly why this processing is essential building on this idea of revealing the story in our astronomical data. Deep sky objects are incredibly faint. A single exposure, even minutes long, is often mostly composed of noise, and you can't see more than a grey little smudge. So we use a number of techniques to improve on this. The first is stacking. We take many exposures, sometimes hours and hours worth, and digitally stack them. This process uses mathematics to average out random noise and reinforces the signal. This isn't cheating. It's signal enhancement based on statistics. The first step in making the hidden data usable. We're not creating anything fake from our data. We're just enhancing what we already captured. The second method we use is calibration. We can use calibration frames, darks, flats, and biases to remove predictable noise patterns from the sensor and correct for optical issues like dust spots and vignetting. This cleans the canvas before we start revealing the image. Stretching. The stacked image 
is usually very dark because most of the data is clustered at the black end of the histogram. Stretching involves carefully adjusting the brightness and contrast curves to reveal the faintest details without blowing out the highlights, such as the star cores or the core of a galaxy. Think of it like adjusting brightness and contrast on a regular photo or on your TV screen, but much more extreme and precise. This is absolutely essential work for making what is an extremely faint signal of a DSO or deep sky object visible. Another thing we need to do is gradient removal. We always have a certain amount of light pollution in our images and moonlight can often affect us badly too. There are other electronic sources of gradients and extra light in our backgrounds. So one of the major use of processing tools is to subtract as far as we can and manage this light pollution to reduce it, revealing the true object against a cleaner background. Again, this is not fake. This is about using the tools we have to their maximum to bring out the truth of the signal that is hidden in our data. Another major tool or another major weapon that we have at our disposal in terms of astrophotography processing is noise reduction and sharpening, often called deconvolution. Careful noise reduction is applied to smooth out the background after stretching. Techniques like deconvolution are mathematical techniques that attempt to reverse the blurring caused by the atmosphere and any inefficiencies in our telescope or camera optics, restoring the detail closer to its true state. So none of this is fake. This is getting to be a kind of a philosophical argument and I'm reminded of the parallel after reading a lot about Michelangelo and the Renaissance sculptors. We can think of the raw stacked calibrated data like a block of marble containing a hidden statue. That's exactly what Michelangelo thought about his work and trying to release the hidden statue in, in, inside. And astrophotography processing is like that. It's the act of the sculptor carefully chipping away the excess stone, noise, gradients, and darkness to reveal the form within. It's not inventing the image. It's revealing what was captured. Every form of photography involves post-processing from the darkroom days to the modern digital form of editing. Astrophotography, dealing with extremely faint signals, just requires more intensive and specialized techniques to effectively tell the object's story and reveal its details. Is there artistic interpretation in the processing? Absolutely. Different astrophotographers might make different choices in color balance, contrast, and saturation, leading to different styles, much like different painters interpret the same landscape. But the goal is always to enhance and reveal the data that was actually captured, not fake it. So we're not fabricating structures or colors out of thin air. There's nothing fake about these images. Okay, now in conclusion, let's put this myth to rest. The colors in deep sky images are rooted in the real physics of the universe, captured by sensitive cameras and often represented using scientific palettes to convey information and tell us stories our eyes can't directly perceive. Post-processing isn't cheating in this sense. It's a crucial and skillful part of the astrophotography workflow necessary to bring out a pleasant and clear image, often hidden by noise, faintness and imperfections, ultimately to translate this captured data into a meaningful visual narrative. It's a blend of technical skill and artistic vision allowing us to bridge the gap between the photons collected by our telescopes and cameras and the stunning images that 
inspire awe and wonder by revealing the science within. And after all, that's what we want to do with our images, isn't it? I know that's what I'm aiming for, is to bring my amazement at what I'm actually photographing and tell that story so that others will be interested in astronomy as well. So finally, before I go, what are your thoughts on astro colors and processing? Have you encountered these myths? Do you think they're f the colors that we see in astrophotography images, are they total fabrications? Why don't you share your perspective in the comments below? It doesn't take a moment for you to share them. For more on this and other topics, including more processing techniques and understanding color calibration and palettes, head over to my website, astroimagery.com. If this video cleared a few things up for you and gave you food for thought, then please do give the video a like and subscribe for more myth busting and astrophotography guides that are coming your way. This has been Astro Imagery. See you next time.